everybody. So before we begin with our terrific trio examples, I need to make sure that you guys are aware of the power of the sticky note. Now, if you're, if you're watching me in the corner of your screen and you find me distracting, um, you know what you can do? You can get one of these custom made blockers. It's just a sticky note. And you can take that sticky note and put it right on the screen over my picture. And then you don't have to see me anymore. Now, it doesn't work if I place it in front of me because it's not large enough. So you have to place it down on your screen just to make sure we're all clear. Got it? Good. Now, we've gone through the derivation of the terrific trio formula. So you see where they come from. And it turns out it's just algebra. You can handle it. We could also derive those using calculus. But we don't have to get into that right now. God, it's beautiful, though. What I'd like you to do in your packet of worksheets, can you turn to the terrific trio examples? And what you should find is something that looks like this. You got it? Now, here's my caveat. Don't fast forward. Go through the problems with me. I know how smart you are. But this is like laying the foundation for the rest of the year. Honestly about how to approach problems. Now, I know you've heard this speech many times. I don't care. I'm giving it again. Are you ready? I'm ready. You got a pencil out? Calculator? At the ready? Here we go. Number one says, what is the final velocity of a snowmobile that has an initial velocity of eight meters per second if it accelerates at 0.25 meters per second squared for four seconds? Well, what do you think? Okay, now, hold on. Some of you are already starting. Relax. Now, would you go ahead and answer that in your head? Go ahead, do it. Wait. Okay, good. What did you get for an answer? That's right. It is nine. Nice job. If you didn't get that, it's okay. Relax. You know what, those, for those people who did get nine meters per second, you're done. You ace the whole year. You don't have to do any more physics because you got the first problem on the first worksheet right. In your head. No, that, that, that's not real, right? You know that. This is the simplest problem I could possibly come up with. And you figured it out off the top of your head. Whoopee! Show your work. Go through the process. And if you think I'm being obnoxious, because I am, purposefully. Here we go. So, how you approach a problem in physics is just like how you approach a problem in math. The problem is, many of you, as the smartest kid in your math class since second grade, have developed some bad habits, and you know it. Here we go. So, my first step is when I'm reading a problem, what are we looking for, the final velocity? What information was given? Well, I know that the initial velocity was eight meters per second. It accelerates for 0.25 meters per second. And the time is four seconds. Now, in order to organize all the information, I need to make a chart. And I do this every time I'm doing a terrific trio problem. And all the way through AP Physics 2, I always make a list of the information that is known in a problem. So in this problem, the information that is known, we have V naught, V, D, A, and T. And I just make that chart. And then I start filling it in. Now, the initial velocity was 8 meters per second. The final velocity is what I'm looking for. I'm going to put a question mark there. Displacement? I don't know. Acceleration is 0.25 meters per second squared. And the time is 4 seconds. Now, the question is, which one of those terrific trio formulas would allow you to solve for the velocity with the information that's given. Yeah, of course, the first one. Good. So this is the step that I believe is critical to you being able to continue to grow as a student. I write the formula out. And then the next step is to solve for the variable that we're looking for. Now, in this case, it's already solved for V, so that's easy. Next step. I plug in the numbers that are given. Now, different physics teachers are going to take different approaches here. 
I'm actually not going to include my units. If you choose to, that's great. If you were to ask 50 physics teachers, you'd get 25 different answers about, well, you get two answers. 25 people would say you don't have to show your units while you plug it in and others would say you do. The point is, I don't. I'm going to plug the numbers in, do the math out. Maybe I'll throw one more significant digit in my answer, and I should get 9 meters per second. I always put units on my answer. Piece cake. Good. Don't get cocky. That's the easiest problem of the year. Number two. It says, a car traveling with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second accelerates at a constant rate of 1.2 meters per second square to pass a slow-moving truck. If the car has a final velocity of 24 meters per second, how much time does the driver step on the gas pedal? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight what I know. If you don't have a highlighter, you just circle it. And I'm looking for time. Okay. So next, let's make our chart. V naught, V, T, A, and T. Now, the initial velocity is 15 meters per second. Final velocity is 24. The acceleration, actually, the displacement, is that given? Nope. The acceleration is going to be 1.2 meters per second squared. And the time is what we're looking for. So again, we got to figure out which one of these relationships would allow us to solve for time. Now, I know that you see it right away because you guys are good. But another way to think about it is which formula doesn't have D? Yeah, that's right. The first one. The easy one. Good. So I'm going to go ahead and write that formula out. V equals V naught plus AT. I don't skip that step. Now, what we're actually looking for is time. So I need to solve this equation first for t. So in order to do that, I'm going to subtract v naught from both sides and then divide by a. Good. So I get v minus v naught divided by a equals t. Now, I can see your faces in my mind's eye. Some of you are rolling your eyes. Some of you stopped listening and just got an answer. Stop. That's not the point. It's not. You got to solve for the variable because it's a practice we're going to use all the way through physics. So you got to start practicing now. It's like using your left hand when you're dribbling. You don't like to do it, but you need to. So I'm going to plug in the numbers I know. I've got 24 minus 15 divided by 1.2 equals t. I plug it into my calculator in one step. First, I hit clear on my calculator to clear everything. Now, could I just do this in my head? Yeah. Did you get 7.5? Good. Nice. Next one. Number three. A ball rolls down a three meter long inclined plane with an acceleration of 1.8 meters per second squared. If the ball has an initial velocity of zero meters per second, meaning it starts at rest, what is the final velocity at the bottom of the ramp? So it gives me distance, acceleration, initial velocity, and I'm looking for final velocity. So as a way to organize my information, I'm going to make a simple chart. This is the part, V naught, V, D, A, T, that I go into autopilot. Got it? Okay. So the initial velocity is zero. We're looking for the final velocity. Displacement was three meters. And the acceleration is 1.8 meters per second squared. So which formula is going to allow us to solve for V? The one without T in it? Good. So it's going to be V squared 
equals v naught squared plus 2ad. Now in this case, I want to get v all alone. I think it makes perfect sense to clean up the formula. Now, the initial velocity is zero. So this term right here is going to go to zero. I believe you've seen that type of notation before. Um, if you haven't, well, there it is. Okay. Um, let's see. Where I draw an arrow through that term and put a zero at the end of it. Sometimes I'll just cross it off, but either one is appropriate. Now I'm going to take the square root of both sides and get V equals 2AD. So let's plug in our numbers. And I show my numbers written down. I don't skip this step. Why? Because this is example number three. Physics is going to get a lot harder. And you have to write down the numbers before you plug them directly into your calculator. So you might as well get in the habit. So get it out. <sighs> now, some of you are just sitting there waiting for the answer. <laughs> Guess there's not much I can do unless I put this in an Ed puzzle and you have to get the answer to move on. Oh, snap, I should do that. What you get? Eh. Hey, real quick before we write down the answer. What's the square root of 4? Nope. What is the square root of 4? Nope. Yes, I heard it. It's plus or minus 2. So in this case, this velocity, when you take the square root, your correct solutions could be plus or minus 3.28 meters per second. Now, in this case, I'm going to define down the incline as positive. There'll be much more on this as we go through the year. I'm going to choose the positive root. Now, I know you're thinking, whatever, Mr. Egger. Foreshadowing. It's foreshadowing. It'll come into play later. Turn the page. Next. The driver of a 1969 Dodge Super B traveling at 25 meters per second evenly applies the brakes for 550 meters before a toll booth. Coming to a complete stop. Yeah, we're not, we're not just driving through in the fast lane. We're coming to a stop and pay. What acceleration did the car or the driver experience? Okay, let's make a chart. So I've got V naught, V, D, A, T. The initial velocity is 25 meters per second. The final velocity is, oh yeah, zero. Displacement is 550 meters. And the acceleration is what we're looking for. So which of my terrific trio formulas would allow me to solve for acceleration in this problem. Yeah, you're starting to see the pattern, right? It's the second one. We did two of the first, now we're doing two of the second formula. So V squared equals V naught squared plus 2AD. Now, what I'm looking for is A, so I should get that alone, and V squared, V is zero, so that term is gonna go away. So I'm gonna get minus, I'm gonna subtract the V naught squared to the other side, and then divide by 2D. Now that's how fast I go with the algebra. I hope you're okay with it. If you're not, you're just gonna to continue to train and get stronger and stronger. Now let's plug in our numbers. Now this negative sign, interestingly, was introduced by algebra. I'm not going to square that negative sign. It's going to be the 25 that is squared, right? Think about it. Yeah, you got it. Divided by 2 times 550 equals A.
and I'm going to get the acceleration is negative 0.57 meters per second squared. That negative indicates, in this case, that it is slowing down. We're going to say that the car going in that direction is the positive direction. Okay, good. Number five. Go ahead and do it on your own. I'm going to do it here, and then when I edit the video, I'll play it in that fast-forward mode. Wait, come back. Good. Okay. This is probably not necessary for many, but as I plug my numbers in here, I'm going to have 2 times 6 plus 1 half times 0.5 times 6 squared. Now I need you guys to know that what you're squaring here is only the time. It's only the 6, right? So I'm going to have 1 half times 0.5 times 6 squared, and we get 9. Now, let's just, before we move on, recognize what this formula is really doing here. Okay. First part, d equals v naught t. What that's finding right here, that is the displacement if it was traveling with constant velocity of 2 meters per second. So during this time interval, it traveled 12 meters due to the initial velocity. This part here is the displacement that was added because it actually accelerated. So it traveled an additional 9 meters due to that acceleration. Maybe, maybe you saw that. No problem. I just want to explain that. Okay, last one. We're almost there. A cross-country runner is fighting off a rival runner for the state title. With 50 meters to go before the finish, she starts her kick and accelerates at 0.5625 meters per second squared for the remainder of the race. If it takes her eight seconds to finish the race, what was her initial velocity before the kick? Okay, let's do it. V naught, V, D, A, T. Okay, displacement was 50 meters. The acceleration is a oddly precise 0.5625 meters per second squared. Takes her eight seconds. And the initial velocity is, oh, that's what we're looking for. So we're going to use D equals v dot t plus one half a t squared. And what we're actually trying to solve for is v naught. Now, I made a big deal about having to solve for the variable first. And I'm going to hold by that. Except for when we get quadratics involved. So here's the thing. I think I'm just going to plug the numbers in right here without solving for the variable first. Would another physics teacher look down upon me with disdain? Yep, probably. But I'm teaching you guys, so here we go. I'm going to have 50 equals V0 times A plus 1 half, 0.5625 times A squared. I'm going to clean up that last term first. Oh, look at that. I get a nice clean number. I'll put the coefficient in front of my pen. That 18, I'm going to subtract their side. I get 32 equals 8 V0. It's almost as if somebody figured out the math with this ahead of time. And for the initial velocity, I'm going to get 4 meters per second. Okay. Now, I know that some of you are drooling on yourselves out of boredom. If you were in class, that could probably be the same thing. But at least I'd get to yell at you and wake you up. So right now, take that sticky off of my picture if you can, so I can talk to you. I know how smart you are. I do. I've been teaching you or someone just like you for 20 years here at One Kind of. I get it. The thing is, I also know where we're going. And I know where you're going in the future once you leave this place. And what I'm trying to do is to install the proper habits so that everything can just be a nice, easy transition upwards and can you can continue to grow. That's why I took the time to do this worksheet. Okay. Read the problem, pull out the information, determine what formula to use, solve for the variable, plug in the numbers and show them, and then solve it up. You totally got this. 
bask in how easy this is for you. Awesome. Thank you for listening. Catch you guys next time.